Diesel is one of the most widely used fuels globally. Millions of vehicles and heavy machinery rely on it daily to start their engines and keep running. From cars, trucks, and trains to ships and generators, diesel is essential for powering the industries that drive our cities and economies. But have you ever wondered how this fuel is produced? How does crude oil, a viscous and dark substance, transform into the refined and efficient diesel we know? Today, we'll journey to the United States, the world's largest oil producer, to uncover this remarkable process. From its extraction hundreds of kilometers beneath the Earth's surface to its transformation into fuel within refineries, we'll explore every detail of the journey each drop of diesel takes before reaching your tank. Get ready to discover the incredible process of producing thousands of liters of diesel. Step 1. Extracting Crude Oil It all starts with crude oil, the natural resource from which diesel and other essential fuels are derived. But have you ever considered what it actually is? Crude oil is a complex mixture of hydrocarbons formed millions of years ago. Remnants of plants and marine organisms became trapped under layers of sediment at the ocean bottom, and over time, pressure and heat transformed this organic matter into the precious black gold. It's astounding to think that the diesel powering millions of cars, trucks, and machines originated from processes that began before the dinosaurs vanished. To extract it, enormous drilling rigs capable of reaching depths of up to 6 kilometers are required. These machines burrow through rock and soil with remarkable precision to access hidden reserves. Some drilling even occurs on offshore platforms, where operations can be even more complex and costly. Once the drill reaches the reservoir, the oil flows to the surface due to the natural pressure of the deposit. However, older wells may require specialized pumps to maintain a steady flow. This step is crucial, as every drop of oil contributes to meeting global energy demand. Upon reaching the surface, the oil isn't ready for use. It's a viscous, dark mixture containing impurities. Therefore, it's transported through gigantic pipelines to refineries, where its transformation begins. Did you know that a single oil rig can produce up to 150,000 barrels of oil daily? Each barrel has the potential to fill the tank of approximately two cars and become the fuel that powers vehicles, aircraft, and machinery worldwide. With the oil extracted and on its way to refineries, we've taken the first step in the fascinating process of diesel production. But this is just the beginning. Let's see what happens next. Step 2. Crude Oil Distillation Once crude oil reaches the refinery, its remarkable transformation begins. But how do they convert this viscous, dark mixture into products as diverse as gasoline, diesel, and asphalt? This is where distillation comes into play, a process that separates the different components of oil based on how they react to heat. In this step, the crude oil is heated to extremely high temperatures, exceeding 350 degrees Celsius, in massive structures called distillation towers. As it heats up, the oil begins to evaporate, and its components separate based on their weight and density, as if they were layers floating at different levels of the tower. The lighter products, such as gases, accumulate at the top of the tower. At the bottom, where the temperatures are highest, the heaviest components, like asphalt, remain. Diesel is found right in the middle, in a fraction known as middle distillate. While it sounds technical, this simply means that diesel is neither as light as gasoline, which evaporates easily, nor as heavy as fuel oil, a denser product primarily used in ships or to generate power in large industrial plants. This newly distilled diesel, separated from the rest, is still not ready for use in engines. It needs further refining and improvement to become the clean and efficient fuel we know. Let's explore that. Step 3. Hydro-treating to clean diesel now that we have the freshly distilled diesel, we still face a critical challenge as it contains impurities like sulfur and nitrogen that can damage engines and degrade the environment if not removed. This is where hydro-treating comes into play. But what exactly is it? Well, it's an essential step in cleaning and improving the fuel. This process works as follows. The crude diesel is mixed with hydrogen and heated to very high temperatures while being subjected to considerable pressure inside a piece of equipment called a reactor. Think of the reactor as a large metal container, 
specifically designed to handle these high temperatures and pressures. Inside, catalysts, which are chemical substances that act as invisible cleaners, help remove sulfur and other unwanted substances from the diesel. This step transforms the fuel into a much cleaner and safer product for use. With this, we are closer to having diesel ready for use. Let's move on to the next step. Step 4. Improving Diesel Quality now that we have clean diesel, the next step in its production focuses on ensuring that this fuel is as efficient and reliable as possible for use in modern engines. To achieve this, it undergoes a key process known as hydrocatalytic cracking. What does this mean? Imagine diesel as a giant, complex block. Hydrocatalytic cracking is responsible for breaking that block into smaller, more useful pieces. At this stage, diesel is subjected again to high temperatures and pressures along with hydrogen and special filters that act as chemical accelerators. This process breaks down the larger, heavier molecules present in diesel, transforming them into lighter, more easily combustible molecules. This not only optimizes fuel performance, but also makes it cleaner and more compatible with current environmental regulations. Additionally, the cetane number is adjusted here. This is a crucial parameter that measures how quickly and efficiently diesel burns in the engine. A higher cetane number means the engine starts smoother, consumes less fuel, and produces fewer emissions. It's like tuning an instrument for its best sound. This process ensures that the fuel is ready to meet the demands of trucks, ships, and heavy machinery worldwide. Step 5. Final Blending and Additives With the diesel clean and improved, the key stage to perfect its performance arrives, final blending. Here, special additives are added that not only improve fuel efficiency, but also protect engines and reduce environmental impact. The most important additives are detergents, which keep fuel injectors clean and ensure even combustion. Antioxidants are also added to prevent diesel from deteriorating over time, especially during prolonged storage. In addition, lubricity improvers are essential to protect the engine's moving parts, such as fuel pumps, preventing premature wear. An interesting detail is that these adjustments not only improve diesel performance, but also help meet strict environmental regulations. For example, some additives reduce the formation of particles and nitrogen oxide emissions, which are responsible for air pollution. Did you know that the characteristic smell of diesel is also related to this stage? Although much of it comes from its natural composition, the compounds added during this phase contribute to its distinctive aroma. Thanks to this final step, the diesel is now perfectly optimized and ready for distribution. But before it reaches the pumps, the most important part is missing. Step 6. Quality Control Before diesel can leave the refinery, it faces its final test, a rigorous quality control. This step is crucial because even a minuscule impurity could affect engines, increase emissions, or reduce performance. There's no room for error here. In specialized laboratories, each batch of diesel undergoes a series of analyses that would put the most rigorous school exams to shame. What is analyzed? Purity, cetane number, density, chemical stability. Every detail is evaluated to ensure the fuel meets international standards. But how are these tests performed? Some are truly surprising. For example, diesel is subjected to simulations that mimic extreme conditions from the freezing temperatures of a mountain to the scorching heat of a desert. All this to ensure the fuel performs optimally no matter where or how it's used. Did you know that if a batch of diesel fails these tests, it cannot be sold? That's how strict the controls are. This phase not only ensures that the diesel is safe and efficient, but also complies with the most demanding environmental regulations. Can you imagine filling your tank with a fuel that doesn't work well? Thanks to these controls, that doesn't happen. Only after passing all these tests does the diesel get the green light for distribution. Now, it's ready to embark on its journey to gas stations and, finally, to the engines that power the world. Let's move on to discover how it reaches its final destination. Step 7. Distribution and Storage With the diesel refined and approved, it's time for its distribution and storage. This is the final step that ensures this essential fuel reaches the engines that power the world. Diesel is initially stored in enormous tanks specially designed to prevent evaporation and preserve its quality. From these tanks, it is transported using tanker trucks or extensive pipeline networks that connect refineries to gas stations and secondary storage facilities. 
Did you know that a single tanker truck can transport thousands of liters of diesel, enough to supply thousands of vehicles? It's impressive to think about the logistics behind each delivery. When diesel arrives at gas stations, it is carefully transferred to underground tanks. These tanks are designed to protect the fuel from contaminants and keep it ready to be pumped directly into vehicles. The next time you fill up your tank, think about that tanker truck that traveled thousands of kilometers to ensure your vehicle never stops. To finish, tell me, do you prefer diesel over gasoline? Leave your answer in the comments, and if you found this video surprising, don't forget to like and subscribe to learn more about incredible manufacturing processes.